for certain poles of order 1, we have a really nice formula. We will see it in this video. Furthermore, we will see what happens if you misjudge the order of a pole. If you take it too high, what happens? Will you still get the correct answer? We will see it in this video. We will start with our uh, formula for first order poles. Suppose your function is a quotient p over q and at z0 p is not zero, so the numerator is not zero and the denominator has a zero of order one, so q equals zero at z0 but q prime is not equal to zero. In that case we have a pole of order one and we can compute the residue as follows. Uh, the residue at z0 is just plug in z0 and p divided by q prime of z0. We'll see that's a really easy formula to use, but why does it hold? Well, the residue at z0 equals, because we have a first order pole, z minus z0 times f times p over q, evaluated at z0. Now we can simplify that a bit, because we know q of z has a zero of order one, so it equals z minus z0 times some g of z, which where g of z is not equal to zero. Now, if we differentiate, we find q prime of z. Uh, we have to use the product rule equals one times g of z plus leave z minus z zero times g prime of z. So, and if you plug in z zero into this expression, you find q prime of z zero on the uh, left hand side, and on the right hand side, this term cancels out, so you get a uh, g of z zero. And now we can uh, compute our residue using this fact. We know uh, our residue equals z minus z0 uh, times p over q evaluated at z0. Uh, we know, well, we just keep p of z over here. We know q equals g times z minus z0. Uh, we see those factors cancel out. So we get a p of z0 divided by uh, g of z0. And we just saw that g of z0 equals q prime of z0 so there we have our formula, u equals p at z0, so numerator is no problem, just plug in the point, divided by q prime at z0, differentiate the numerator once and plug in the point. Notice you're not differentiating the function or so, then you would have to use the quotient rule. You just pick the numerator, plug in the point, and differentiate only the numerator and plug in your point. So let's do an example, f of z equals cosine z over sine of z, and z0 can be any multiple of pi, where n is in z. Uh, now we see that the uh, sine has a, a zero of order one at n pi, because sine at n pi equals zero, the derivative of the sine equals a cosine, and if you plug in n pi over there, you get something non-zero, so the uh, denominator has a zero of order one, and cosine of n pi, the numerator, is not equal to zero. So we have a pole of order one, we can apply our formula. The residue at n pi equals uh, numerator at n pi divided by the derivative of the denominator at n pi. Well, the derivative of sine z becomes cosine z, uh, plug in the number, use cosine n pi. So the residue is just equal to one. So there we are. And another example, f of z equals z over z to the power four plus four, uh, the zeros of the a denominator are at square root of 2 times e to the power i pi over 4. They lie on the, uh, on the circle with a radius square root of 2, uh, with angles 45 degrees and then 90 degrees further, all of them. Uh, we take just one of them, uh, the residue at uh, z0, where we take this, this z0, equals uh, the function value at the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. So we get z0 divided by the derivative of the denominator becomes 4 times z cubed, plug in z0, divided by 4 times z0 squared, uh, yields the 1 over 4 times 1 over z0 squared. Well, if we square z0, we get 2 times e to the power i pi over 2, so 2 times i, so 4 times 2i over here. So we have 1 over 8 times 1 over i, 1 over i equals minus i, so we get minus i over 8. So this formula yields really fast results if you have a pole of order 1. Now what happens if we 
Mitchic, the order of a pole. So we have cosine over sine, and uh, z0 equals 0 is a pole of order 1. What would happen if we would somehow think the order is too high? Suppose we think it's of order 2, for example. Now, so what, what would we do in that case? Well, we multiply by z squared. Uh, then we have our file set, and we think erroneously that we have a pole of order 2, so we have to differentiate once and divide by 1 factorial. So we compute 5 prime with the quotient rule, so we get a, a 2z times cosine z times sine z. Uh, and we get from the differentiation of the cosine over here, we get a minus sine times z squared times the sine z. Yes, this term over here. Uh, and then we diff have to differentiate the denominator, we also cosine times the numerator, so we get a z squared cosine times cosine, this is a minus sine of the quotient rule, divided by sine squared of z. Uh, it looks like a mess, but it simplifies a bit because you have a minus z squared times sine squared, minus sine z, z squared times cosine squared, so we can factor out the cosine squared plus sine squared, which yields a uh, minus z squared. So that's this term, minus z squared over sine squared, and the other one, that the si uh, one factor of sine z cancels out, so we get 2 cosine z times z over sine z. Now we have to be a bit careful when plugging in z equals 0, we actually have to take the limit, but in the limit we get 2 minus 1 equals 1, so 5 prime 0 equals 1, so the residue equals 1. Uh, and actually, this answer is correct. Okay, we misjudged the order of the pole, we thought we put it too high, but uh, just think of how you computed uh, residues. If you, m if you make the order too high, you will still get the correct answer. So that is nice. Disadvantage is that you if you make the order of the pole too high, you have to differentiate more often. So usually you make computations more difficult. So my advice is, don't do it. Try to find the order of the pole first before you apply the formula.